Hello everyone and welcome to Rizal Life Works and Writings, the continuing lecture. For today, we are going to touch on the most significant works of Dr. Jose Rizal, particularly on essays and poetry. For our lecture today, this is going to be a, summer, a summative lecture on essays and, and the poetries. Uh, for essays, we have Philippines, a century hence, the indolence of the Filipino. Letters would include to the young women of Malolos. Poetry would include to my fellow children or sa aking mga kabata. The flowers to the flowers of Heidelberg. Mi retiro and his uh, magnum opus, we call it uh, Mi ultimo adios. So before we study the the works we have to understand that works could could uh, could be viewed from two approaches one is direct and the other was implied we see information can be directly understood can be directly understood because it is in its native language like filipino poetry can be can be understood right away because it was written for the filipinos but you have to remember that some of the works of rizal are written in Spanish and you know you know why it's written in Spanish it is because it is directed not to the Filipinos but to the Spaniards now these Spanish works or these works that are that are written in Spanish will be translated by different authors and different authors will have different translation of the original passage or the original doc document or works so first we have to understand that some of this translation um we we can we can draw a conclusion that we need to see the original passage or the original the original manuscript in order for us to understood to understand fully the context of the work for us to understand the context we need to probe or we need to answer some questions with regard to how the writer uses tone, tone meaning his attitude towards his reader. Of course, we have to understand the context of the writer. When and where did he write the works? What is the theme or the topic of the literary pieces? What are the intentions of Dr. Rizal when writing these literary works? Was it to convince people? Is it just a, an expression of his uh, heart? Or is it, um, is it a, a mental diarrhea where, where he just he just uh, he just uh, uh, says these things because he wants to impart his knowledge and ideas to us. Who are the intended readers? Who will receive his message? What are the important ideas that can be drawn out from his literary works? And of course, what is the significance and relevance of the literary works to the present Philippine society? Because we need to study the past in order for us to understand the present. And, and these works of Dr. Rizal has, has given us a very contextual ex experience of what was in the past. In fact, in so many of his works, he presented historical analysis and, of con and conditions of the Philippines. And then he stresses the importance of studying history in order to understand the present condition of the society and for us to predict our future. So right now, we are going to, to answer these questions in mind um, so that we can, we can appreciate these literary works. Of course, there is a need to look back to the history when we want to understand our our present uh, our present condition um, during the pre-colonial before the spanish came filipinos have their own culture we have our own culture we may be primitive but we are normal we are trading with other um, nationalities and we are just doing on our own uh, doing doing fine but during the colonial period within 333 years there was an imposition of spanish culture and somehow Filipinos became inferior. We, we, our our self worth has somehow diminished. We, we look ourselves very low. We, the the, the self esteem is very low, and of course there was misery 
Why misery? Because there were abuses and injustices during the Spanish colonization. And of course, with these injustices and abuses, people will not be productive. So therefore, there's a lack of progress. And Rizal wants to look at this in his works so that he wants to he wants to wake up the, the nationalism, our patriotism during the time. And uh, he wants to know what will become of the Philippines? Will there be reforms? Because somehow after his death in, in 1896, December 30, 1896, there was a freedom revolution and the European powers were, 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 were gunned up on, on Spain regarding this, the situation in the past. The first essay we're going to talk about is the Philippines, a century hence. Um, it was entitled Filipinas Dentro de Cien Anios or the Philippines after 100 years. He was trying to predict, he was trying to predict what would happen to the Philipp to, to our country 100 years from then on. So it was written an installment in, in, a, in a periodical or, a, or a, a newspaper called La Solidaridad in four installments uh, from September 30, 1889 to January 31, 1890. So from 100 years, that will around the 1995 or 1990s and so on. And then uh, he, he was predicting what will happen to us 100 years from then. Um, the only question that Rizal broaches is, is a basic one. Will the Philippines continue to be a colony of the Spain? Because um, it, was, it was written to analyze the probable condition of the Philippines at that time. Rizal attempted to expose the reasons for failure of Spain to uplift the Philippines' economic and social conditions, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. Um, the Philippines a century hence was actually a collab with Andreas Fyodor Hager. Andreas Fyodor Hager visited uh, the Philippines and wrote a book uh, called Travel in the Philippines in the Past. And when he met Hager in Germany, because Hager is German author, um, there was a there was a connection, and uh, uh, he was he was he was he was starstruck with with Hager, and uh, that's that's why he was able to write this uh, masterpiece. In the essay, The Philippines a Century Hence, Rizal was trying to pinpoint the causes and sufferings of the Philippines during that time. He mentions three causes why Filipinos were suffering. First, the Spain's implementation of its military policies. Um, the military policies caused the decrease in the number of Filipinos at that time. Uh, poverty became more widespread than ever as farmlands are left to wither. So no one is stealing the soil because many people uh, oh, died as well because of these military policies. The people continued to suffer from hunger and diseases at that time. Second, there was deterioration and disappearance of Filipino indigenous culture. Before the Spanish came, we have our own culture and some of the locals, we forgot who we are what we value, what we believe, our religion. Uh, Filipinos have lost their self-worth and their confidence in their past and their heritage. So there was deterioration. There was a downgrade of our culture. The third one is our passivity and uh, submissiveness to the Spanish colonizers. Um, the essay, uh, Philippines Century Hence, um, attributed the passive, passivity of our people, passive. When you say passive, people are no longer active. They are just um, trying, it's, it's, a, it's like a, they, they, it's a blind obedience. People will just obey for no reasons. At the times, the, the Spanish friars are the most powerful forces and they use this force to intimidate the natives or the Indians, they would say. So in a, in a matter of um, governance by the colonists, um, they tried to subdue the, the Filipinos at that time. And how did they do that? They tried to keep the Filipino uneducated. They tried to, to make the people ignorant. They keep the people poor, impoverished, uh, hungry, 
and they are subjected to forced labor at that time. Um, and they tried to exterminate the people. So, uh, uh, so why do you exterminate? So that it can hinder progress. Um, the colonization, although it has not totally uh, uh, been been a disadvantage, but somehow a lot of of sufferings are caused by 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 the colonization of the Spaniards at that time. But remember that these things that they were saying are utterly inevitable. Um, in the in the long run, they have not kept the people uneducated. They have not kept the Filipinos uneducated. Why? Because we have result. We have a lot of Filipinos, the Ilustrados, who were uh, awakened. They they were they were conscious about what's happening. Second, we may be in impoverished at the time, but the Filipinos are very resilient. So until now, you can see if there is calamity, people will try to survive with the calamity. There is pandemic, people will start to 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 really uh, rise up to the occasion and to the to the problems. And at that time, the Spanish are wrong. The Spaniards are wrong. There was a start of the revolution, no matter what they do with the Filipinos. So the the essay challenges, um, the the, the essay post challenges to the present Filipino families, uh, instilling national discipline, for example, true love of country, exercising full control of national sovereign sovereignty, our power, our our authority, as a Filipino nation and assisting the citizens continue, connect with their community. The next essay we're going to talk about is The Indolence of the Filipino. It was originally entitled La Indolencia de los Filipinos. It was published in the periodical La Solidaridad in five installments from July 15 to September 15, 1890. It was a very long narrative. It was a response of Jose Rizal to the accusation of Spaniards that the Indios, that the Filipinos, were indolent. When you say indolent, um, tapulan, pero indolent is like uh, superlative than just tapulan. It's, it's it's like a tapulan that cannot be remedied. It cannot, it cannot. It, it's more than being tapulan. It cannot do anything about it. And that's how the Spaniards look at Filipinos. Um, uh, we are, we are, we don't work according to them. We sleep one to three at noon, or or we sleep at noon. We don't want to work. We we let the carabao work for us, and according to them, um, we there could there, there could be that that could be a reason why we are not progressive. Um, results, reasons, and rebuttals for for the indolence can can be traced back. Uh, can be can be external and can be internal, according to result that the Filipinos may be indolent because they are because of the repressive economic policies of the Spaniards at the time. What are these? The galleon trade, the forced labor, and the high taxes. Um, why are we so tamad or tapulan? It's because um, you, you are forced to do things which you don't like. Secondly, the galleon trade was profitable but the Filipinos are subjected to work and they're even asked to pay taxes. Religion, religion has also um, caused the indolence of the Filipino at that time. Uh, they just pray, but they don't work. Lack of initiative from the government towards advancement in commerce, trade, agriculture, and education. According to result external. Why? Because the government at the time was just concerned with taking out, taking, not giving to the Filipinos or to the colony. Internal people or the, the Spaniards or the, the Filipinos, sorry, the Filipinos felt inferiority, inferior. Um, they have low self-confidence. And the Spaniard, Spanish are trying to tell us that we are inferior. And then we lack national sentiment, no unity, no voice, unmotivated. So these are the reasons why Rizal was saying or 
must be the, the rebuttal. When you say rebuttal, the Spaniards say the Filipinos are tapulan. But Rizal said there are reasons behind them. And it was an analysis of Rizal in this um, essay called The Indolence of the Filipino. And to quote one part, he says, Man works for an object. Remove that object and you reduce him into inaction. Now let's go to the letters. One of the famous letters Rizal wrote is to the young women of Malolos. It is a letter to the young women of Malolos in response to the request of his friend, Marcelo H. Del Pilar. After learning that a group of 20, actually 21, including teacher, 21 young women in Malolos, Bulacan, who petitioned to the governor, governor general to open a night school to study Spanish language. At the time, um, Rizal was looking a concept or was, was thinking of a concept of a Filipino woman like Maria Clara of Nolimitangere. Maria Clara was so serene, uh, Pino. She was very, how do you call that? Very gentle. But the young women of Malolos, according to him, are, are like Spartan women. These are the ideal women for his honor because these women fight for their rights to be schooled, to be, to be educated. These 20 young women in Malolos actually changed the entire um, view of women in the Philippines. It started the women's right during that time. In his letter to the young women of Malolos, Rizal praised and congratulated their bravery in asserting their rights. And Rizal learned that um, these young women do not just like to be homemaker, but they wanted to be educated, they wanted to be empowered. And I think that is the, I, I think that is the, the, the ideal women of today. Um, women had to stand up for their rights. That is why we have laws already against uh, viol uh, um, violence against women, and and this this uh, this sector of the society had to be respected as well. In a particular letter, you can see a very good uh, passage there. It says, "No good water comes from a muddy spring. No sweet fruit comes from a bitter seed." So. It is essential that we give importance to the women of our society. And knowing that these women are empowered, they can also be leaders. Now let's go to poetry. Um, one of the earliest poet, poem wrote by, written by Rizal was to my fellow children. It was written in Tagalog as Aking Mga Kabata, but allegedly um, there was no proof that Rizal wrote this poem. The idea of this poem is to love one's language, our language, and the Filipino, same with other language, is not inferior to other language. Uh, although, you said, you will be saying, ano, wala man siya mag -pilip, mag sa Filipino all throughout his writings, why he was using the Spanish, the Spanish. He was using Spanish because he wants, it was for another audience. But according to him, in his Poetry, ang hindi magmahal sa sariling wika ay higit sa hayop at malansang isda. Kaya ating pagyamaning kusa gaya ng inang sa atin ay nagpala. So it was a very good poetry. Um, try to read that one. The next poetry or the poem um, is to the Filipino youth. In uh, Spanish, it was La Ala Juventud the Filipina. Um, let me check. Let me check if I got it right. Because uh, yes, Ala Juventud Filipina, a poem submitted to uh, submitted by Rizal in a in a contest for Filipinos by the Manila Lyceum of Art and Literature in 1879. He won a silver prize, and the prize was a silver pen. The idea of this uh, poetry is. To say that the youth, the youth is the hope of the motherland. Ikaw ang pag-asa ng bayan, ang kabataan. Now, let's take a look at yourself. If you are really the hope of our motherland, what made you say that you are the hope of the motherland? Take a reflective uh, moment to, to assert 
if Rizal and affirm if Rizal is still right that you are the hope of our country. The next famous poetry written by Rizal was while he was in Germany. It's around August 1886. The title is To the Flowers of Heidelberg. He was fascinated by the flowers in spring and wrote it because of his deep longing for his family and country. The idea of the poetry in total is his hope for the betterment of the Philippines. It was actually a heartwarming letter to his family because he misses them a lot. So like you are, you have, you are homesick. Um, you feel the homesickness. Uh, sometimes you can, you can draw inspiration to write poetry in order for you to express your longing and your um, regards to your family. Um, in one of the lines, he said, Go to my country, go far in flowers, planted by the traveler in his way, and there beneath the sky of blue that over my beloved towers, speak for this traveler to say what faith in his homeland he breathes to you. So, um, it was it was actually a homage to his country, including his family. Next, we will discuss the poetry of Rizal. Well, he was in he was he was exiled in the Pitan. Uh, the title is Mi Retiro. It was a very beautiful poetry um, because his mother told him to write one for her. It was a poetry written for his mother, but uh, while he was in a serene life in the Pitan, he was able to contemplate a lot of things, including his, uh, his including asking forgiveness from his father because of the of the pains he might have caused uh, his parents. So, you, know, you see, um, most of the time we are associating Rizal with his mother, but there was also times when Rizal was very affectionate with his father. He was even carving a bust for his father and it has become, it it become a centerpiece in their house in Calamba, Laguna. Uh, it, is, it is a poetry that accepts his destiny and whatever justice will be given to him. And the beautiful point point there in Miritero is it's actually it's actually a, a swan song for him, almost a swan song for him before he was he was uh, able he was he was he will face his uh, ultimate um, ultimate destination. Of course, we cannot uh, end our discussion without talking about the assignment, which was Mi Ultimo Adios. Uh, it's the last poetry written by Rizal, which was untitled and dated and hidden in an alcohol stove or burner. So this was the culmination of nationalism, his chivalry, his love for his country, and his willingness to die for his country. So my suggestion is that you go through with the poetry again, possibly memorize it and record it and then submit it to me. Uh, we'll try to see as a project for midterms. Uh, adios, patria adorada, región del sol querida, pero la del mar de oriente nuestro perdido Eden. A darte voy alegre la triste mustia de vida, y fuera más brillante, más fresca, más florida. También por ti la tierra, la tierra por tu bien. I mean, that was just the first line of Mi Ultimo Adios. It was a masterpiece. It is the culmination of Rizal's love for his country. So there you go. Um, these works reflect the life and the dedication of a, of a hero to his country, to his motherland. We hope that it still lives in us. His ideals are still resonating with us despite our challenges despite the changes of times so we hope um, you can take time i hope you can take time to look at these masterpieces again poetry essays and even the two novels which are no limit and el filibusterismo 
turn for us to go back to our roots. Because if we go back to our roots, we will be able to understand who really we are, who really, uh, what, what, what we are right now. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of the music. Patria adorada, región del sol querida, perla del mar de oriente, nuestro perdido Edén. A darte voy alegre, la triste mustia vida, si fuera más brillante. Más fresca, más florida, también por ti la tierra, la tierra por tu bien. Amiga, mi alegría, adiós, 
Son! 